to talk about this so um yeah bad life decisions uh the tokyo olympics are two weeks away and uh, there's a lot of updates going on it was actually lisa do i think from is she from bloomberg or one of the journalists i follow online uh yeah she apparently she was uh, in a department store and saw that there was uh they were selling uh official licensed uh, underwear with tokyo 2020 written on it and all i could think is like this is like the perfect underwear to wear when you're about to make a terrible life decision i mean just imagine <laughs> I could just imagine scenarios of, uh, you know, someone being in a position to uh, see the underwear and suddenly realize, you know, this is a terrible mistake. Um, <laughs> is that, how could you think anything else uh, if you saw this or, 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 or wore this or, or, or whatever? Uh, no, the, the, the comic possibilities of this are just uh, the unlimited, unlimited. Uh, I'm really curious if they actually sell any of this or, or like who would buy underwear with 2020 written all over it but yeah i must admit i mean then i started to think maybe i actually should get some i mean you know uh but there again <laughs> the joke would only be for myself so um yeah but that that's the thing i suppose i suppose as, as a gift as a sort of an inappropriate gift for somebody who you think uh has self-control issues i mean there you go if you if you know someone who's a compulsive gambler perhaps or uh <laughs> someone who needs to, needs to self-reflect on the, the recent decisions that they've been making on life this is the perfect presence on tokyo 2020 underwear speaking of reconsidering bad life decisions uh fukushima and hokkaido have decided to join the tokyo surrounding prefectures uh, of not having with the, with the announcement of a new state of emergency they've decided that they will not have anyone originally it was only going to be Saitama, Chiba, uh, Kanagawa, Tokyo we're going to have no spectators um, however ever so what of course happened was everyone in Tokyo started cramming for the tickets for <laughs> uh, Fukushima and uh, Shizuoka and Hokkaido and immediately everyone in the other prefectures says doesn't that mean all the infected people from Tokyo are going to like come here to visit to, to watch instead and based on that, Fukushima and Sapporo decided, yeah, homie, don't play that. So they changed their minds about that. Um, at the moment, you can still go and watch events at Miyagi Prefecture, Shizuoka Prefecture, and Miyagi Pre uh, uh, and Ibaragi Prefecture. However, probably, um, you know, they'll be changing that as well, I would imagine. This is the thing. With uh, the last couple of times when there have been school holidays and it's only been in Tokyo, you know, immediately the holiday destinations, Okinawa, Hokkaido, those places, become as bad as tokyo because we we take it you know and this is also why i've been saying all along yes it's self-interested and selfish and so on to say this but you know um is it really better to do the distribution of the vaccines all over japan geographically equally or is it better to concentrate the vaccines in the areas that actually have cases and prioritize those other areas that don't have cases so that you can actually eradicate it in Tokyo and lessen the risk of people from Tokyo spreading it all over the rest of the country in the meantime. I, doesn't it make more sense to, to target the areas where there actually is COVID with the vaccines first? Uh, Japan in the end has gone for this geographic equitable distribution model and sure i can imagine that the politicians would be afraid of backlash if tokyo got it you know because tokyo isn't worth any votes and you know rural towns they want to feel protected but at the end of the day are they really more protected doing it that way so you know uh the result is anyway it appears that all the olympic venues are, are going to be um without spectators which is fair i mean look all, all the money more or less comes in through television broadcasting anyway um uh it's a shame I mean, I, I like the Olympics and I, you know, but, but I never planned to be getting tickets for this. And again, being in a crowded stadium and, and even even on the off chance that there could be like clusters or anything like that just doesn't seem worth it. I mean, having the Olympics at all still seems ridiculous. Um, interesting, the celebrities that are rolling into Japan, celebrities isn't really the right word, but prominent people, for example, apparently uh, Ted Ross from the WHO, who criticized Japan last February for introducing travel restrictions on China, when he was like, oh, no, you know, you mustn't overreact and uh, restrict uh, trade, particularly with uh, countries like China, that we believe are doing a very good job, which had everyone, and this is before Trump and everyone started, this is in February last year. So before, you know, every, people that thought it was even going to make it to America, um, before the, the, the ferry even came to Japan, um, Japan reacted very fast to cut travel ties and uh, the WHO criticized Japan and immediately everyone in Japan said oh they're getting money from China well we're, we're just not going to listen to anything you say anymore my son still makes fun of Ted Ross 
<laughs> so you know it, it was in fashion here a long time before um, you know it, before he, he became a problem anywhere else but he's coming to Japan from the WHO apparently to support the Olympics I have no idea how he's gonna do that but apparently that that is something that he is doing more welcome than Tedros is Audrey Tang uh, the uh, health minister of Taiwan who well, now they're struggling a little bit with the Delta variant, and of course they're struggling to get vaccines in Taiwan, but they've had a pretty good run there. And, you know, again, having an actual epidemiologist as a, as a, as a minister in charge, of the, it has been a good move for Taiwan. So she's a bit of a celebrity here in Japan, and she will be a more welcome attendee. But there again, why is anyone coming to Japan? Like, even for the opening ceremony, like the president of Korea is coming, and that's great. I'm, I, I, if, if Korea and Japan can get along better, that's wonderful. But why? why are you coming? It um, doesn't make sense to me that anyone would be coming to Japan for any reason, honestly, even the athletes. But if, if it has to be the athletes, just keep it at the athletes, right? So anyway, people can't resist a junket. Um, also, to add on top of everything else, Bach, who came to Japan, um, he's going through a three-day quarantine rather than two-week quarantine like everybody else coming to Japan is required to do. He got a special pass. He plans to uh, go to, um, I think Coates is going to Nagasaki and Bach is going to Hiroshima to pay respects. Uh, at those two cities I'm not sure that was necessary and honestly I don't think traveling around the country is really a good idea in the circumstances he should just be staying in Tokyo uh, apparently uh, Japanese press is reporting that he said uh, to people around him that he didn't understand why the Olympics have to be held with no spectators given that it is true that uh, Japanese pro sports like baseball and soccer are being held in Tokyo in front of stadiums of people right now so why can't the Olympics some would say that's a fair point some would say shut up <laughs> a lot of people are saying shut up a lot of people are alarmed at the you know the the tens of thousands of people coming in from every country in the world uh, even vaccinated people are worried about that that said there haven't been very many cases of athletes coming into the country and being found to have it I believe there's someone from um, Lithuania the other day. There's a couple of people from Uganda who had it. Uh, but the numbers are pretty low. Anyway, but uh, yeah, you know, um, uh, there, there is a lot of anti-Olympic stuff happening at the moment, especially thinking back that the Olympics started as a vanity project uh, really of, of, Shintaro, of the Shin, Shintaro Shihara, the nationalist sort of governor of Tokyo. Uh, on other Olympic stuff, uh, yeah, uh, sort of connected with this, um, Toyosu, which is right beside where the Olympic Village is, apparently a lot of um, families and support people from the Olympic teams have been wandering uh, into the shopping mall district there, where people can get takeaway dr uh, beers and drinks and go and sit in a park there. So they're thinking about walling off the park because people are complaining that lots of people from the Olympic Village have been uh, wandering outside and drinking and mingling with the public, which yeah, is kind of like, well, Japanese drink as well. But at the same time, one of the ideas is that they're not supposed to be leaving the Olympic Village. It, it kind of highlights that the quarantine, you know, that the voluntary quarantine system there is not working and that's been causing a lot of discomfort. So these things will um, continue to cause angst. Um, still on Olympics, the, the good, good news um, is... Um, very cool to see that uh, Rui, Rui Hachimura from the Washington Wizards uh, is being, uh, he's going to be carrying the Jap Japanese flag at the uh, opening ceremony um, uh, along with Yui Sasaki. So, um, yeah, that, that, that's super cool. And it's actually, I think it's actually not, uh, I wouldn't call it virtue signaling. It's actually genuinely, you look at how diverse um, the, um, the Japanese, like the athletics team and, how, and many of the Olympic stars are. Um, you know, people having uh, multi-ethnic backgrounds uh, is now really prominent and, and actually, I dare say, even normal in the Olympic team. And so it's great to see uh, someone from a sort of diverse background representing Japan and, uh, you know, breaking the stereotypes. I think Japanese still afford themselves. Certainly the rest of the world probably has about Japan. It's funny, I actually find that it's often people outside of Japan that have greater expectations of Japanese hom homogeneity than Japanese do themselves. Um, but yeah, you know, truth is, it's not unusual to see people from Rui's background and you know from multinational backgrounds who are Japanese anymore and I think it's really cool and it's great to have him holding the flag to show that so that is a good thing um, uh, about the Olympics but the rest of it kind of sucks um, into the